Hello, welcome to our channel. My name is Mfono Bong Dawson, your host. You know, last week we discussed helping the youth to locate their path to victory. And that topic was very, very key to us as a church, as a society, as a country, because the youths that, that are not properly guided, certainly will negatively actually disturb the church negatively and negatively affect the society by extension affect the country so you know according to john 10 10 the bible says the devil is there to kill to steal and to destroy so as parents you will not allow this mission the mandate of the devil to be fulfilled so you have to make effort with the help of god to make sure that the youths of today are guided so that we can have a better tomorrow now you look at um first john 5 verse 4 he said now for everyone born of god overcome the world so we have to lead them to god so that they can actually overcome the world now in that our lessons we we discuss uh be watchful of the pitfalls there are things that actually will take the youth away from god and give us a take of a bad society tomorrow now we actually express uh, samson and reuben as case study and why did they fail they did not guide their eyes from women they did not subdue their laws for women they did not obey their parents they did not even obey the law of god they did not submit to authority those are the things that made those two people fail which we actually use as a case study now we have uh, Daniel, a victorious youth in his time, as our case study for a person who was victorious. Now, what really made Daniel victorious? He excelled in wisdom and understanding. And you know, this wisdom and understanding came from God because Daniel was a man who feared God in everything. Remember when they were taken uh, into bondage, even in the palace, he refused to eat any royal food, but decided that he would eat anything that does not concern the royal and even bible recorded that even he eating that he was even better than those that were eating the royal food and study of the word of god study the word of god daniel was a man who was committed to studying the word of god at all times praying daily and always you know first Thessalonians will tell us to pray with that season so it is what daniel did you know remember the story of daniel they look for everything so that he could become uh, a victim they couldn't see anything only what they wanted was or what they could use was to use the law of his god against him of course he did not comprise so he followed divine instruction daniel followed divine instructions he shone every act of compromising the faith and of course you know daniel affected positively on the society and the people then and that's the reason that we are still celebrating daniel today because he did not de de deny his faith, he believed in God, he trusted on God at all times. Hello, welcome to our channel. I will encourage you to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so that anytime we upload new episode, you'll be notified. Thank you. God bless you. So today we want to discuss persistent prayers. Persistent prayers. Let's pray. Father, please open your ears to my cry. Hear me. Hear my land. Give me the grace to endure in the place of prayer. Hear and give answers to my prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Our memory verse is taken from James 5 verse 16. James 5 verse 16 says, Conf confess your fault one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much note the key words effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much now our bible text is taken from daniel 10 11 to 15 
and he says he said daniel you you who are highly esteemed consider carefully the word that i am about to speak to you and stand up for i have now been sent to you and when he said this to me i stood up trembling then he continued do not be afraid daniel since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your god your words were heard i have come in response to them but the prince of Persia, king the kingdom resisted me 21 days then michael one of the chief prince came to help me because i was destined there i would detain there rather with the king of Persia. now i have come to explain to you that what will happen to your people in the future for the vision concerns a time yet to come while he was saying this to me, I bowed my face towards the ground and was speechless. Persistent prayer. Daniel did not give up even when he did not receive answer to his prayers. He kept praying. 21 days. A prayer that would have sorted. In fact, immediately he started. That first day, everything was sorted. But he did not give up. He kept pushing, kept praying, pressing, praying, praying, praying. Then finally, the angel came and the answer to his prayers was delivered so like in luke in luke 18 verse 1 it says the bible the bible says that men ought to pray and not to faint so we will be discussing persistence in prayers and how to yield to testimonies that can bring about affirmation of statement of jesus persistent prayers that will bring testimonies testimonies that will confirm jesus as a son of god as a prince of peace because you know through jesus we pray so indeed, if we persistent and when answer come, of course we know that indeed the name of Jesus is not just a name, but a name that has been given on earth, in heaven. That we can when you mention the name, every knee will bow and tongues must confess. Now let's critique the memory verse so that we have a little understanding of what we say. Let's compare two versions of the Bible. Let's have a comparison of two versions, the King James and Amplified. So, and King James says, confess your fault one to another and pray for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. Please read it carefully. Then let's look at the uh, um, amplified version. It said, therefore, confess your sins to one another, your failed steps, your offenses, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored the heartfelt and persistent uh, prayer of a righteous man that believer is able to accomplish much when put into action and made effective by god it is dynamic and can have <clears throat> excuse me tremendous power now if you look at the king james version say confess your fault one to another pray one for another that he may be healed see this healing here is not sickness so when you commit sin it becomes your soul your spirit is attacked so that attack now becomes a wound you know remember the bible says his ears are not too heavy that he cannot hear us his hands are not shortened that he cannot actually uh, touch us save us but it is our iniquity so that is what the bible is trying to say there when you commit sin it distances you from god Healing now is restoration. In this context, it's restoration, not wounds, not sickness. It's being restored. And he said, you confess one to another. So sometimes when we do intercessory prayers, we are not just going to intercede for, for healings. There are different forms of healing. Restoration is healing. A man who has backslided and prayed that he should be restored, is that is that kind of prayer. So now, when a man is righteous, the Bible says that man prayer becomes fervent. And that righteous man prayer, it is that prayer that God will hear and put to use. Now, you look at the way Amplifier for Amplify is just talking about it. Say, therefore, confess your sins to one another, your failed steps. That is your sin, iniquities, your offenses. Pray for one another that you may be healed. That is restored. Now, it's not just you. Genuine repentance is now. A, a, a requirement say the heartfelt and persistent so genuine repentance now is needed for your prayers to be heard so the heartfelt and persistent prayers of a righteous man a righteous man that's a key word that is a believer is able to accomplish much now look at the way it is actually broken down here when put to work or action now the bible talks about 
when you know the knowledge. Say, when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. There are some righteous people who are not even given to prayers. Some people believe that they, when you pray, those prayer warriors are the righteous people. No. There are people that are righteous, they are doing things right in the sight of God, but in that prayers, they don't even get things done. Now, so this place is encouraging us, say, even when you are righteous, activate that angle of prayer. And look at it. The Bible says, God told in Jeremiah, he asked him, what are you doing? He said, and I said, you've seen well. He said, I wasted my word to come to pass. What does it mean here? It means that a prayer of a righteous person, God is committed to getting it to come to pass. God is committed to making it come to pass. So when even when put into action and made effective by God, so a righteous man needs to pray. It is God now that will make that prayer effective. Bible in, in, in the, the Amplified said it is dynamic and can have tremendous power. So when a righteous man is committed to prayers, God now will activate the power of prayers by responding to it. Then this prayer become a tremendous prayer that can destroy the, the kingdom of darkness, that can heal the sick, raise the dead, set the captives free. So persistent prayer now is very key. It is needed as a child of God. Even if you don't have prayer point, please you intercede for others. Hello, welcome to our channel. I will encourage you to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so that anytime we upload new episode, you'll be notified. Thank you. God bless you. So away from that, uh, uh, though, let's move over to our first lesson outline, Pray Without Season. First Thessalonians admonished all believers to pray without season. This means to be in constant fellowship with God. In a place of prayer which is made possible when our heart and mind are always focused on things of god when your mind you know that god knows and he searches our heart he knows when our heart and minds are on him so praying with that season is a lifestyle of worship praise and thanksgiving that comes from an understanding of god what go who god is what god has done what he's doing and what is capable of doing in the future remember in Hebrews, is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. So it's not a man that he should lie. It's not a man that he should repent. What he said he will do, he will even do much more. Of course, you know, Jesus told us greater works. So it's not limited. God is ready to do more things. Things we did not see yesterday, he's going to do more today. So we men on earth, we need to activate that. So when we pray, you are able to do the following. Gratitude to God. In Psalms 1.1, 1, 1, 110, that is 110 verse 4. He said, The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Mekisede. So you are now, you claim that kingship in him. So singing, singing, prayer of faith. Now you look at James 5 verse 13. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. So persistent prayers, Bible study. Now in 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, of course, do your best to present yourself to God as approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, who correctly handles the word of truth. So you need to study the word of God. It encourages you to pray. Fellowship in Hebrews 10 verse 25, say do not give up meeting together as same as in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all more as you see the day approaching. So when the day is approaching, of course, we need to be prepared. We need to encourage other. We need to exhort each other because we have to be encouraged at all times. Sometimes, you know, things will be overwhelmed by activities around you and anything can happen. So people need to be encouraged part time. Make God your friend. Make God your friend. You look at James 2 verse 23. The scripture says, and the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was counted for him for righteousness and he was called a friend of god and if you look at john 15 verse 15 i no longer call you servant because a servant does not know his master's business he said i have called you friends for everything that i learned from my father i have made known to you so you need to stay there in place of prayer so that your friendship with god will increase and be stronger now in lesson outline two the benefit of persistent prayers benefit of persistent prayers let's look at it number one it helps to develop a relationship with god 
persistent prayers help us to develop relationship with God. In Romans 8 verse 15, it says, The spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. So, persistent prayer strengthens the bond, relationship between a man and God. It helps to understand God's love in that place of prayer, of course. As far as now we look at Psalms 103, verse 13. As a father has a compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Those who are persistent in place of prayer are those who trust on God, are those who fear God. And so when you fear God, of course, you'll be there to do what you want. And of course, he celebrate your being with him. If you look at 1 John 4, verse 8, 1 John 4, verse 8, it says, Whoever does not love, does not love God, no God, because God is love. Now, another point, the benefit, it, has, it also results in testimonies. When you stay in place of prayer, there is always testimony. Look at 1 Kings 18. Let's look at from 41 to 46. 1 Kings 18, 41 to 46. It says, And Elijah said to Ahab, Go, eat and drink, for there is a sound of heavy rain. So Ahab went off to eat and drink. But Elijah climbed to the top of the Mount Amel, went down to the ground, and put his face down between his knees. Go and look towards the sea, he told his servant. He went up and looked. There is something there, he said. Seven times Elijah said, Go back. Then the seventh time the servant reported, uh, reported a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, go and tell her, hitch up your car chariot, go down before the rain stops you. Meanwhile, the sky grew black with cloud and the wind rose. Heavy rain started falling. He had rolled off to Jezreel. The power of the Lord came upon Elijah and took his cloak with his belt and he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. That is what prayer, in the place of prayer, what we can gain, what we can benefit. Now four, it gives you strength to avoid temptations. In the place of prayer is strength. And the Bible says it does not give us spirit of fear, but of power and of sound mind. Sound mind is capacity to descend, capacity to rebuke when necessary, capacity to run away when necessary, capacity to flee from temptations. If you look at Matthew 26 verse 41, it says, watch. And pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. It is in that spirit, the place of prayer, rather, that you find your spirit that will be able to resist temptation. If you look at um, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 30 says, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Do it all to the glory of God. So it is that player in the place of prayer, rather, that you will learn humility. When we start encountering God, manifesting God in different form, of course, you'll be afraid to even lose those God's presence upon your life. So you wouldn't want to do anything that will take the glory of God from your life. It keeps you holy. The place of prayer, people who are consistent in prayers are those who fear God because they know they don't have any other option. Only only option they have is to pray to God. Now if you look at Psalms 24, 3 to 4, it says, Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may attend in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and the pure heart who does not trust in an idol or sway by a false god. So those who tarry in the place of prayer are those who make God their number one option. In this in the place of prayer, you invite Holy Spirit into your life. You know the stories. Pentecost Day, they were there praying, and the Holy Spirit came down and overwhelmed them. Of course, you know the testimonies. They were able to speak boldly and proclaim Christ to the people of that city and many were added to the kingdom number seven it makes you a carrier of god's power and presence place of prayer is where you receive power it place you receive presence of god daniel always go to that place because he knows that is the only way he can get wisdom and understanding power and authority so if you look at psalm 16 verse 11 and it says you make known to me the path of life you will, you will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasure at your right hand Remember, in the presence of God is full days of joy. The place of prayer is the presence of God that joy, everything is obtained. So prayer without ceasing, rather than complaining and murmuring. You need to pray without ceasing, rather than complain and murmur. In everything, give time. Celebrate God in good times, in bad times. Because He knows 
Maybe I should, maybe I should let us tell you the truth. You know this life. This life is like a script written by God. We are not just playing the script. So he knows every step we want to take. He knows it. So even the bad things we think are bad things, the Bible says all things work out for good for those that believe God, for those that love him, for those that trust in him, for those that put their trust and put all, they don't have a second option. They don't have one Baba somewhere. They don't have one, one Mama somewhere. Those are the ones that everything will work out for their good. If God should open our eyes to us, show us, even when we are in trouble, the benefit we will get from that trouble, we will stop murmuring. So I will say today, please, cease complaining and murmuring, trust in God. Now in conclusion, as a child of God, we have assurance that our Lord Jesus, through him, will answer our prayers. You know, a name has been given. That the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee must bow, every tongue must confess. So as a child of God, through Jesus, we should be assured that all our prayers will be answered. So we must therefore be persistent and ask God for grace to live in obedience to his words. It is in that obedience that God will answer our prayers. You know, we said, the psalm will say, that his ears are not heavy, his hands are not shortened, and he cannot help. It is our iniquity, disobedience, that put us far away from us, uh, him from us. So please, tarry in the place of prayer. It's a benefit to it. Thank you. We've come to the end of our discussion this week. It's always good to see you come around to study with us. I celebrate you. It gladdens my heart to know that some people, this our little effort, bless your life and bless your soul. Thank you so much. We are encouraged. Thank you. Please do share this with others. See you in the next episode. You're not You're not a man, no. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut.